I came in like a wrecking ball. I don't know the other words of that song. Ah, yeah, bonk. I'm on my big ball. Well, everything is dry, it's hard as a rock. It's crazy how hard this stuff is dry. I didn't, uh, I didn't think it was ever gonna be this hard as it's an acrylic product, but holy moly, it's, it's hard. If you guys want a solid finish on something that you don't want the kids to destroy, this is the stuff to do it. Not only is it uh, durable, it also like, I think it exfoliates your fingers. So I've got, uh, I've got it pretty much done. So the plan now is to coat it with paint because I had three different pails and they all had different colors. I had a pumpkin orange one, a light gray one, a dark gray one. So I'm gonna consolidate it all and paint it all one color. I've got the sprayer because I don't want to waste any more time kind of coating this by hand. So the sprayer should be quick work of it. I'm first gonna actually prime all my ribs because I want those not to bleed through. The rust tends to uh, bleed through. Uh, latex based products. So I got a couple spray bombs. I'm gonna hit those things and then I'm gonna spray the whole thing with latex paint and let it dry. Building balls is fun. Wow, that's sharp. <laughs> Hey guys, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor. It's the Kami Koto Knife. It is fast becoming my favorite knife in the kitchen. It is crazy sharp. It is made of Japanese steel using traditional techniques. Did I mention it's crazy sharp? It's got a nice weight to it. It just, it feels balanced in your hand. I'd also like to mention it makes a great gift. So if you're looking for something, someone that's hard to buy and they seem to have everything, they don't have these. These come in a really nice, ash box as you guys can see they've got there's a set of three i've got the the cleaver out here each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee and you don't have to take my word for it these knives are used with michelin star chefs all over the world all right let's take a closer look at these knives this is the eight and a half inch slicing knife this is the vegetable knife taking a couple of chunks off our anana our pamplemus Ugh. It's not a pamplemousse, it's a na-na-na. This thing is crazy sharp. We've got our vegetable slicing knife. Oh, I don't want to cut my hand off. Oh. Oh. Crazy sharp paring knife, which, you know, if you want to cut up an apple. You ready? Oh. Kami Koto has many special offers going on right now. And if you use my discount code, Modern Self Reliance, you get an additional $50 off any purchase. Who can resist a fresh cut carrot? All right, we're moving right along. We've got all our paint has dried and uh, we're gonna put a uh, bed slash sitting area. My plan for the inside is more of a lounge area. So it's gonna double as a bed slash bench. And uh, I figure it's the biggest thing in the room. So I should probably get it in first before I position everything else. There's gonna be a wood stove and uh, I got a giant window that's going to go in either the upper or the lower, depending on which way I wanna do it. I haven't decided yet. The only problem I might have is that the steel is going to be slightly too rounded and gonna fit too far into the room. So I might have to bend that a little bit in order to get it to fit. But uh, otherwise I think we're, we're moving, moving right along. It's very, it's very echoey in here. I gotta get some soft things to kind of dampen the sound. But first things first, we're gonna get the bed in. That's actually not bad at all. Just kind of using this as a template in order to uh, mark my uh, where I want to cut it because I'm going to span four spaces. So I'm going to put it from here to here. It kind of gives me the back wall, gives me a space at the front, and then I got my fireplace behind where you guys are sitting, and then the window somewhere there. Got our bed rail all sized up. Plan is to go from here to here. Weld this guy in place. I kind of like the color of the rust. I think I might paint all the ribs rust color. I'm not sure yet. It's got that industrial look to it. Because if you can walk over it, you can weld it, right? That's kind of what they say. If you guys look closely, I actually, uh, I welded on a, uh, like a bracket so the wood can sit inside. Inlay. Check it six times, right? Six times. 
I think it's shrunk. What do you think, buddy? Hey, Frankie? Hey. It's my favorite time of any build is when I install my fireplace. Did I mention I love fireplaces? I love the ambient glow of a burning wood anytime I can. I got my little mini cubic wood stove here. This is the cub version. It's, uh, it's small. It takes about five and a half inch wood. This is the heat shield that uh, is an optional, uh, optional buy. It's all made of stainless steel. And this is the plan. I think it's going to go in the middle here. One of the benefits of using this, uh, the drive it stucco is that it's added a lot of thermal mass to this ball. So it's, it's actually, it retains the heat really, really well. Not to mention there's spray foam all on the walls. I don't think I'm gonna have a problem heating it. It's gotta make up uh, like a bracket to hold it. I've got the, the main, the equator to just screw into. It gives me something nice and solid to screw into and then just kind of straight up and out. And I gotta cut a hole in the ball, which is kind of unnerving to cut a hole in the ball. But hey, this is where it's gonna go, right? Right there, I think. Holy holy! That's a holy. Look at a cross section there. You can see our waterproofing. You can see our foam insulation. You can see how sturdy the stucco is. It's flexible yet sturdy. Holy moly. I didn't think it was gonna be that hard to cut through that. That's insane. Oh, one more hole. Got all our pieces cut. We've got our circle, which is gonna have the glass attached to it. It's gonna be able to open. And we've got our other circle. And then I cut some flat stock, flat stock up because I went to price it out and I guess it's like a $27 for something that's about three feet long, which I would have needed a bunch of it. I can see I should have enough of this stuff. So now all I gotta do is weld it up and uh, see if I can actually make it work. I. Uh, I have a pretty good example of the way it's supposed to be because Dennis made me one before and I kind of learned from his, uh, his design. So I'm gonna do a little take off of his design. I'm a big fan of Makita and uh, it, uh, it's kind of neat because it actually oscillates. It kind of jumps forward and I actually was cutting a lot better than the, uh, the Craftsman and uh, it's got like a, a metal foot and it's relatively stable. And I like how it's, you can kind of see through the, the tip of it and it's, yeah, it's got a clear view. I guess you can slide that guy down too and, uh, and, and hide your stuff if you got stuff kind of flying at your face and it's got a uh, speed control variable thing. So that's a, that'll be a nice addition to the, uh, to the Makita workforce. But now we weld. This little guy here is the flange that the window is gonna be stuck to and then I welded a drip edge right here and that's going to allow the water to hit here, hit this drip edge and then kind of go around the edge and not drip inside the cabin. I just still has to weld a hinge on. Uh, I'm gonna do that after probably get some paint, grind it down and uh, weld the hinge on. And then I'll have my window all set and ready to install. In order to attach my flat stock on the side of my window frame, I ended up taking the flat stock and tacking it on with my welder and then slowly bending it around the circumference of the circle and every once in a while adding a tack to kind of hold it in place and then I'd bend and then I would tack and then I would bend and then I would tack until I was all the way done. And then what I would do is actually take my welder and do a firm bead all the way around, kind of locking it in place just to make sure everything doesn't move once it's installed. That, 
my friend, is one comfortable bed. Actually, look how big it is. It's like regulation size. It's like 83 inches long. That's like a king size length. It's got the, you can do the old, like look at that. You got space for another. You can sleep in the fetal position. You can get like four people in here. This thing kind of looks like a Jesus fish. It's <laughs> it, uh, it took a while to film. This is pretty cool. I'm gonna get some uh, some bedding, I think, from uh, Cabela's Bass Pro Shops. They've got some really comfortable sleeping bags and bedding and stuff like that. Some pillows. This would be like a comfy little nook. We've got storage underneath. I'm pretty excited about this. My welds are holding. They're holding, I swear they are. Okay. We just have a nap right now. This is cold. Oh. We're at the stage of the game where we're gonna be putting in our window. This is the completed bubble window. As you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see that at all. I gotta see if I can show this to you. It opens. I hope it opens. It's not. There, just like a hatch, hatch opening. The plan is to stick it at a, at a level. Break it, break it before I install it. It's always kind of nerve wracking while installing a window. The, uh, the plan is to actually put it right about here in, like right about there. I think I like it. It's a question of, do I, do I center it? Maybe I need the assistance of Dawn. You come in here for a second. You were angry. I rang? Yes. Can you, uh, we're gonna center it between these things. Okay. So you want me to measure or hold? Measure. I think I'd want a little higher. I don't want to get too far into the curve. Okay. How about, how about there? Okay. So. Uh, I just gotta cut it now. All right, you're gonna go somewhere safe, window, because danger. Just go in the hole and say that then. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for the coolest porthole ever? That's cool. I guess because I've been in this ball for, I don't know, like six weeks now, finally having a window and you can kind of see outside. It's very, very, very neat. And you can see the cross section of this, this the ball. You can see the you see the stucco and then you can see your spray foam and then you can see the waterproofing and then you can see everything is, is kind of consolidated together. Nothing kind of blew up when we cut that out, which is very cool. I'm very impressed with how that, how that worked. That stucco is crazy uh, hard. You can see the, uh, the blade. I don't know if you guys can see that. Very, she polished it. I guess that's all the stone, the aggregate that's in the stucco. It's uh, yeah, a couple blades. But we got the hole in there. Let's just see if the window fits. If you guys are curious on how I tied the flashing into the waterproofing membrane, I actually ended up using a drywall angle and cut it into slits and then kind of bent it around. So what's going to happen when it rains is the water, if it gets through the cladding into the waterproofing membrane, it percolates out through this little section here. It'll hit this, follow its way down here, past the chimney and carry on down. That should work. And then the boot, this little boot guy here, goes on top to keep all of the water off getting through this little hole here into the cabin. 
All right, bringing you guys up to speed. The other day, I ended up doing a lot of stuff off camera. I ended up uh, taking all the ribs and I painted it with a uh, rust trim clad paint, kind of like an ode to its original form of rusted steel. I kind of like that look. Uh, I ended up taking the bed out, I sanded those down and I, and I varnished the top so I've got a nice uh, smooth surface for once I put my bedding on top. I got the cubic mini stove installed and I had it fired up the other day just to dry the paint. It was rather cold yesterday so that was really good at drying the paint. It, it you know, lowered the humidity considerably and I had actually fiddled around with the door trim around the, uh, the door and uh, the door jam in order to get that all buttoned up. So it was a lot of fiddly stuff the other day I didn't really film because it just takes that much longer to do and especially when you're doing stuff that you're not real excited about you know what just get it done and, and move on to the more exciting things so as you guys may know when i cut the inside of the window i kind of had a little bit of an angle and it turned out it was actually a good thing because it made the cut wide and that allowed me to actually put sealant around the window and have it marry up against the thing and actually tie into my existing membrane but it left a kind of a nasty looking gash on the outside so what i've got here is a uh it's weather stripping this is actually from the garage doors and uh, it was on the bottom and what i've done is i've made kind of like a hula hoop and a piece of stick and i've joined them together and what that allows it to do is give it a nice pretty gasket all the way around so you know what you could silicone that or you could just leave it like that if you ever need to waterproof it in the future it starts to leak you can go inside, you actually just take your gasket off and service your, uh, your rubber all the way around the window. I think that's an ideal solution. I got my flooring. This is my flooring and I pre-cut it to size. It fits in my sphere. This is a uh, roll-in from uh, Bigelow Flooring, my favorite flooring store. And uh, it is 68 inches in diameter. This stuff's Congolium, which is, it's like, it's like linoleum, but it's like waterproof. It doesn't have that paper backing on it. It's like all, all vinyl. And uh, yeah, it's some nice stuff. It's darn near bulletproof. All I do is kind of, if you can loose lay it, then they can silicone the edges. I don't know which, uh, do I want to go diagonal? It kind of looks like hardwood floor. I don't know if I want to go diagonal, if I just want to go straight in. Cut it with ribs. It's darn near perfect. Look at that. That's the easiest floor I've ever installed. Right there. Oh, it's been a long haul. I gotta let it actually, I gotta fire up some more wood in here to make this thing settle down. Oh. Easiest floor ever. This is the gist of it. That's how easy the floor is. It's already getting cozier in here. What'd you do there, Don? I got really warm. Yeah. Because it is very warm. In Isn't here. it? The paint's drying excellently. Look at, look at, look at that. Just cooking. Look at that. So it, you built something. That's you our... need a uh, template. So I made a template for the bed. So we're going to put a, a foam pad down. Yeah, so we're going to take this template that Don made out of tech tape and cardboard and uh, we are going to put it on a piece of foam and then cut it out. We're going to have a custom bespoke, a bespoke bed that's going to fit tightly in this space. It's going to be so comfy. And I got to leave. Too hot. Too warm. Too hot. I, I might have put too much wood in there to uh, I'm getting out of the kitchen. dry in the space. Good thing we made a template. Good Looks perfect, on. Oh, it's cozy too. It's like the comfiest bed I've ever owned. We're not done yet, are we? More, more amenities. You guys see that? 
Look at five bucks for an entire luxury microfiber sheet set. Luxurious, soft, and smooth. My wife told me I had to buy all the pillows. She's like, you gotta get, you gotta get pillows. It's gotta be cozy, soft. I don't even know what this thing is. It's like, it feels like it's faux. It smells, it smells good. It's faux. I don't know. I don't know what it is. And this ones are soft too. Look at that. It's so cozy. Maybe this way. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which way you're going to do it. The wife's going to come in here. She's like, you did it all wrong. Oh, dog's got another blanket. Oh, this is, this is the, uh, this is soft too. There, beautiful. And then I got myself a round mirror because I thought, you know what, this is kind of cool. You guys can see yourself. Look at, this is what I stare at. You guys right there. That's what I stare at you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure how to mount a round mirror and a round ball. It's kind of like if you put it over there, you'd have like two eyeballs looking at you, which might be kind of neat. I don't know, I gotta sit on that one for a while. You know what I'm thinking? What if you put it up here? That would be kind of cool. If I could make it, if I could make it so it hovers a little bit and then I could make it glow. I don't know, I'm gonna have to sit on that for a little bit. It would help me cover up my, my Jesus pin. I don't know, what do you guys think of that? The other day when we got it hung, we didn't quite get enough time. We ran out of daylight to uh, finish the inside. So I'm back here today because I'm going to finish up the inside. We had a rain overnight and it's a good time to check to see if there's any leaks. And you guys can actually take a look as well. I got to put a doorknob on still or some sort of handle. Seems like I always leave that to the last. What have I got for, what do I got to open it? Some tool in here to open this thing. What do I got? What do I got? What do I got? How about wire snips? Oh. There we go. Oh, it's just, just ever so slightly. Preliminary tells me that there is no leakage. It's very much like getting on a boat. When you push off, it kind of gives you a little bit of, a little bit of sway. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. It kind of makes you have sea legs. So the indication is that uh, it doesn't appear to be any leaks. Even the, even the pin in the ceiling doesn't seem to be leaking. Um, Seems to be a little bit of weeping right there, but that's, that's no big deal. That's around the window. Now I kind of anticipated that happening. Um, that's why I didn't really seal my gasket around. I might have to do a little bit more of, uh, of waterproofing around there, but it's ever so slight. It did rain quite a bit. And uh, the good thing about this, this, this sphere is everything that is built out of is waterproof. So if there is any leaking, it's not a big deal. It's like the inside of a boat. Speaking of boats, anyways, we won't go into the boat project yet. That's a plan for another day, but this, uh, this thing, I got to get some permanent lighting. This is my, my, it is this little temporary lighting is getting old. It is very obnoxiously bright. See how bright that it's just, it's just bad. So I've, uh, I've come up with a solution to my, uh, my lighting situation. And I probably in hindsight should have ran a wire to the center of the sphere. Uh, but I didn't, but, uh, during the evening, I've come up with a solution to that. And, and it involves chasing a wire up to the top there and, uh, and actually putting a lighting in there. So, uh, that's what we're going to do now. You ever seen these guys? One light fire starter. It's like, uh, it's like for starting fires for people that don't know how to start fires and they smell delicious. They like, it smells like potpourri. It's got a wick on both ends. I'm gonna try. I've never, I've never tried it. You guys are gonna try it with me. So it it takes the place of kindling. So what you would do is you'd put it in there, and I'm assuming so you can light both wicks, and then you put your firewood. And the great thing about the cubic mini is that you don't have to, uh, you don't need a lot of wood. You put it uh, takes five inch wood, and like I was saying, it's not, it's not a super cold day. This is slightly too big. Too bad I don't have a lighter. Camper open. I, 
probably could have lit that with a lighter or a match. But it's actually really great about these stoves is that they, they have a very good draw, a really good draft. So there's the damper at the front. So you have it wide open and then you make it sure it's wide open at the back so it's got air on both sides. And that's it. Just light her up. So you can, I don't know if you can see my breath. It is a little chilly. This is my plan for lighting. This is the uh, indoor outdoor LED strip. I picked this up actually from Princess Auto. It had it in the, um, in the surplus area at the back. So it was like uh, crazy and expensive. And uh, I think it'll serve my purpose because it, uh, it it has the ability to be indoors or outdoors. And this uh, happens to be both. It is indoors and outdoors. Bonus is that I can change the color depending on on what I want. So if I want like, you know, spaceship i can have it green or i can have it blue or i can have it just white or i can have it strobe in and out if you want one of those those freaky nights anyways all right uh let's get this started because i'm just rambling rambling on hindsight is 2020 uh so yeah the plan is to drill the rib and then because they're hollow ribs i'll be able to fish a wire up through that thing and get to the top easily enough i hope All right, one hole, hole in the top. Tip of the day, if you don't want to get metal shards in your bed, you take your old cup, this happens to be a McDonald's cup, and you drill a hole, look at that, double lined. I don't need that part. You drill through the cup, having your drill bit come out the end, and then what you do is you sleeve, gotta watch where my rib is because it keeps turning, and then you take your cup, you line up your drill bit, you take your cup, you stick it right up against your surface that you're drilling, and you drill, and all your filings end up in your cup. All your filings end up in your cup, and then you don't have a disaster on your hands with metal filings in your bed. What the camera doesn't illustrate is that. I'm swinging! I don't have any low voltage wires, so I'm going to use really high voltage wire. And what you do is you push the wire into your hole, and it hopefully comes out the other end. I got blue. Okay. Well, you can kind of see that it kind of works. Hello? Knock, knock. Are you going to come in? I'm going to give it a try. You got your sea legs? Uh, I don't know. It's a little wiggly. I did bring donuts and coffee though. Uh, excellent, you're welcome in. Come on in. It's I, I grabbed this. And that. Ooh, donuts. But it's gonna like tip my way. Well, yeah. You got. <laughs> grab on and hold on. <laughs> Are you gonna like help me? I can't help you. You can help me. Well, you want me here? I'm gonna give you. A, you gotta put your foot up there. There you go. Sure footed as a mountain goat. <laughs> Come oh my on. goodness. <gasps> Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> Sit down quick. Well, I want my coffee. It's like being on a boat. <sighs> they can't tell how rocky it is. Oh, it's... Oh, it feels weird. Uh, does it feel like a boat? Yeah, it's a little bit. Oh. Don't remember the last time we were in a boat together? That's right. I, I, I don't think I'm feeling it yet. Frankie, you got up here no problem. Hey? Hi, hi Frankie. You got lots of room in here, eh? Like, where am I gonna go, lay? Can you get under the bed? What do you think? Well, does it feel like a boat or what? Doesn't yeah, it? It's it's very rocky. You can't tell on camera. I gotta put the yeah. Anyways, you brought donuts. Here, you wanna get your first? You want your donut? This is, I really want coffee. Yeah, I, well, we're having coffee. We need a little like. I know there's drink. gotta be shelves. It's gotta like. Yeah, we're gonna do. I'm gonna do a, like a honey do list. <laughs> we need we need shelves. I need a, somewhere to put my coffee. But we need like a railing. We need like a railing. Everything's got to be built sort of like a boat. You have railing in order to to hold your stuff so it doesn't uh, when the boat's rocking, you don't lose all your coffee or yeah <laughs> stabilizers. Maybe we need like a mass stabilizer damper on the bottom of it to kind of counter the sway. Don't, oh. Don't do that. I think it's it's okay. I think people in the Maritimes are laughing at us right now. I think it's not that bad. Get used to it. Sea leg. <laughs> well, you can always it put like head feel funny. outriggers on the sides and then kind of like hold it 
stable. I'd put three more attachment points and then it wouldn't jiggle as much. You gotta be one with nature. You're like a, like a, like a, like a leaf in the wind. I have a delicious donut. Mm -hmm. Did you make this donut? No, I bought them. Did you put it in the box? I put it in the box. That counts for something. <laughs> you pull that pin, we roll away. Is that your escape plan? I don't know, you can pull it, try it. Mm -hmm. Try pulling it. No, not when I'm in here. Come on! No way. Put you to work. Does that sound scary? Yes. I don't particularly feel that safe in here. Why not? Because it's very wiggly. It's okay, you get used to it. I don't think I will. Here's what it's like. Oh. Oh, goodness. Okay, so hold it. Just uh -huh. for now. Uh, keep holding it. <laughs> Can I do anything else? No, hold it. Everything you do is easy. always this way. Looks easy, but it never really is. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Oh, no, it's not attached. Uh, uh -oh. I didn't think so. I didn't attach that side. Why? Because <laughs> there is a dart in there. <laughs> okay, good. All right, now I can adjust it after. Oh, good. Good. Look at that. Look, and it's a mirror too. Isn't that cool? It is cool. Because, you know, you need to make sure you look okay in the woods. <laughs> It's glowy. It's cool. It is cool. Did you put your fingers on there? I did not. Actually, that's probably my face. All right. Well, how about that for a light? Look at that. All we needed was two people and uh, yeah, four hands. Two people, four hands, and a little bit of coffee. It's got to be adjusted slightly. It's a little crooked, but that's okay. We got it up there. We couldn't actually, like, because there's four points of contact there, and it's all by tie wires. So what do you think? Is it, It's kind of neat, eh? It is very neat. I like it a lot. Of course, the wires need to be, you know, tidied up and... Um, Always got the honey-do list. <laughs> I, I just said that. That's my job. Our first house had a blue and orange... We had a blue wall with an orange wall. And the only reason I picked that was because there was a government building that I did that had uh, orange and blue. And some fancy overpriced designer picked those colors. So I was like, it must be... Must work. Must work. Must be right. I don't know. Anyways, that's why we got orange and blue in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's your cue to go. That's All right. Cue to go. We're going to continue on building. Thank you for the coffee You're welcome. and the liquid motivation. We'll see you again. All right. Next time. I think you're scuffing my door. Wow. Well, you did this set. I'm, uh, that's my next project. You have a short wife. There you go. I made it. You Actually, made it. it wasn't too bad. Do you feel like you have sea legs? Or your legs feel wiggling? Um, I feel a little dizzy. There yeah. you go. Yeah, that's good. All right, I think I got it to where I like it. I've got it pretty much evenly spaced on the on the ceiling, hanging down equally distance. And uh, the good thing is, is it hovers. And uh, if I need to service it, I can just take it down, just uh, disconnect it and then lower it. I've also got my remote control here, which allows me to change color, brightness, or as it's sitting right now, fade in and fade out. I kind of like that. Changes the mood periodically. There we go. What do we got? We got blue and then we got purple and then we got pink and then red. As it goes this way. It's not impossible to do. I'm pleased with that right now. We're actually going to try that for a little bit and see how it works and uh, revisit it maybe a little bit later. All right, real world test. Take one. I've got my chains attached to the sides. I've got, uh, I got my hooks here for when I get a piece of a rubber band so I can pull my chain in so it doesn't get caught in the door and then i've got a orange strap that allows me to pull the door up so the plan is to get out you kind of like a boat you time it within a wave you get out you're out and when you want to get back in same idea of actually you have a footstep now which is the bottom of the handle and you grab in your sides of your boat and you just calmly get in easy peasy i was gonna do a whole series of ladders and i was like nah you know what keep it simple keep it simple so and then you just kind of haul your door up like this and once we have our rubber bands on 
we will tuck our chains to this little attachment right here. And then you pull your door closed. It'll actually help pull the door back up too. So tuck our chains back in. And then we need a locking mechanism. Actually, you know what? I've got this thing. Figure I will maintain the boat theme. We could actually put that right, right there. All right, guys, I think we're all ready to go. I'll give you the old tour of my big hanging ball. Let's have a look. So I've got pretty much everything buttoned up. I've got my chimney installed. I just got to put the other cap on. That's, uh, that's a later date project. But as you guys can see, this thing swings freely. It's just swinging in the fog. And I've got my window. You actually, can you see inside? I got the lights going on. All right, let's have a look inside. So let's give the old, the old tug, tug, open up the door, swings right open. And let's get it on in. There we go. It's like getting on a boat. Give you guys the, the, the old dime tour. So we've got our mini cubic wood stove in here. We've got our little bit of fire going here to keep the, get the, get the edge off, get the humidity out of the air. We've got our little fireplace tools over here. We've got our chimney installed. Um, if you guys didn't watch the initial, you can see that we've got our stucco here. It is darn near impermeable. You can beat that stuff up. It's gonna last a lifetime. It's a lifetime product. And underneath that, we've got about an inch, two inches of spray foam insulation. So this stuff stays really toasty once it gets warm. There's a lot of thermal mass in here. And then we've got our custom built bed with our nice piece of foam on it. Up on the top, we've got our LED light fixture with our very fancy mirrored ceiling. And then you can change the color depending on the mood you want. And then we've got our opening window. If you want a little bit of a breeze, again, that is custom. Everything about this thing is custom. I don't even know why I keep saying that. It's everything's custom. And then when you're all done for the day, you basically pull the door up you crawl into bed, you hit the switch on the lights, and it's good night. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, and join me on the next one.